Hey everybody. So this problem is about a horizontal spring. So you're really young, but I don't know, maybe yeah, maybe you saw the movie, right? Sonic. Um, so it was a Sega Genesis. Uh, video game and it had springs like this one and so Sonic will come compress it, you know, gain energy I guess um, uh, Put his kinetic energy into the spring potential energy Go back um, A few of the things in the game were not physical, but it's fine uh, So I kind of draw Springs like this anyways So you have your spring And the spring constant is 250 newtons per meter. And it is compressed. Uh, let's say that it is already compressed. So it started from here. Uh, 12 centimeters. So let's call it 0.12 meters. Uh, it is used to launch a box. The mass of the box is 250 grams. So you know, let's call it uh, 0 0.25 kilograms. And uh, it actually has friction. So let's kind of draw it over here. The coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.23. And you have to get the uh, the speed of the box when it is launched. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this, uh, these quantities over here. K, 250 newtons per meter mass of the box 0 0.25 kilograms um, mu k the coefficient of kinetic friction 0 0.23 and the displacement 0 0.12 meters and you know, I'm going to draw my my situation over here cool So what's going on in this problem? The spring has potential energy. How did it gain that potential energy? Well, someone, you know, arguably you, uh, compressed the spring. So there was work done on the spring. That work you know, is, is energy. So it went into spring, spring potential energy. And then um, the spring potential energy becomes kinetic energy, right? So it is uh, uncompressed. Uh, it exerts an acceleration force on the, on the box and the box gains kinetic energy. Uh, but a uh, little different from most other problems of this uh, kind, you also have friction. So friction is going to decrease the kinetic energy. And you can imagine maybe the limiting case, right? There's so much friction, uh, this, you know, it just moves, but it kind of doesn't accelerate. Um, the spring is completely uh, elongated or you know, extended, and the box is still here, right? It didn't move. Why? Well, all that energy, this one and this one, well, from here to here, all of that went to friction. What is that? Well, it's uh, thermal energy. 
So you're going to let's say you know, imagine that this spring has a really high spring constant. So you can put a lot of energy in it. But this has so much friction that you know you still have that same situation. What's gonna happen? This is gonna get really warm, right? Really hot. So the this is still kinetic energy. But it is kinetic energy that is not um, organized, let's call it. So um, it goes into the motion of the atoms, but that is disordered um, motion. So you see you have the energy, but it's very difficult to recover it. So in this case, we want to know uh, the amount of energy here. So that it's going to be the work, and this is the definition of work done by friction. So friction dot the displacement. So um, let's draw the free body diagram in order to get the friction. So we have mg down. We have uh, the normal up. We're going to have the acceleration over here. And the friction over here in the, um, let's call it this spring. Um, what is interesting about the friction is that it always supposes, and we saw that before, the direction of motion. So if dx is in this direction, friction is in this direction, the angle between the force and the displacement is 180. Cosine of 180 is negative one. So friction always um, produces negative work, which means that it's taking energy away from the system. So that's cool to know. So uh, here we can write down uh, Newton's equation. So sum of forces in X is um, minus friction plus uh, the spring. And you have some, you know, M A X uh, sum of forces in Y minus M G plus the normal, and we know that that is zero because it is not accelerating up uh, or down. So from this, we can get that the normal is mg, and the empirical description of the uh, of the force of friction is mu times the normal. So it's going to be mu times mg. And you can see that it is a constant. So we can put this, we can take the force out of the integral since it is constant. So it's mu mg um, uh, dot product dx here g is the, actually this whole thing, right? Um, dx. So this is from zero to final x. And that's going to be 12, uh, 0 0.12 meters. So you can just replace it by delta x. Um, the dot product is going to give you the magnitude of this times the magnitude of this, times the cosine of the angle between them. And we already saw that cosine of theta of 180 is gonna be negative one. So I'm gonna write it over here. Minus, yeah, that dx. 
That looks pretty good. So mu mg let's say x. Um, good. So this is the amount of work done by friction. So it is the amount of energy that is going to be removed from the system. So what is K, the kinetic energy? Well, if this spring potential energy goes into thermal energy and kinetic energy, it means that kinetic energy is energy of the spring in the spring, potential energy in the spring minus the thermal energy. And we know that the potential energy in the spring is going to be uh, one half of kx squared, delta x squared, right? So we can get um, k. k is going to be one half of mv squared. We have everything we need, right? So this is thermal energy. Uh, this is going to be one half k delta x squared minus, um, uh, I guess it's, uh, this one is negative. Um, how are my signs over here? Well, these are just um, magnitudes. Um, so this is the one that goes away. So in this case, I'm going to leave the negative out. Yes. So mu m g delta x. So we have the velocity. It's going to be twice. So we have the two over here. And divided by the mass. So this is um, k delta x squared divided by the mass minus 2 mu, we can get rid of the masses, g delta x. Uh, this is a squared, so then we get the square root of this. Cool, so that is the final algebraic expression. So let's plug in the numbers. 250 newtons per meter. Uh, 0 0.12 meters squared, 0 0.25 kilograms. There it is. Yep. Minus 2 times 0 0.23 times 9.8 meters per second squared divided by, I mean, times the, um, the displacement. 0.12 meters, and you can barely see that. And remember that this is to the one half.
Let's see, so this is uh, point 0.12 squared times 250 uh, divided by 0 0.25. So this is 14.4, which is just uh, is when you cancel it. So you have newtons meter uh, squared divided by meter kilogram. So we can get rid of this meter and this meter. Newton is kilogram meter per second squared times meter divided by kilogram. So we will get rid of the kilograms. We have meter squared divided by second squared. And we have the square root over there. So that's meters per second. Good, because we're looking for a velocity. meter squared, second squared, um, minus 123 times 2 times 9.8 times 0.12. We get uh, 0 0.54 um, meter squared meter over second squared times a meter, meter per second squared. Uh, I'm sorry, meter squared per second squared. And so we take that subtraction and we have the one half here. So that will be um, 13. 0.9 meter square second squared so to the one half uh, three point you know, right over here uh, three point seven seven two we can leave this seven uh, meter divided by second. That's the speed. So, what is the speed without friction? Well, it will be the fourteen point four square root of that. Uh, it will be three point eight meters per second. So uh, how much of the energy went to friction? Well, not much, but it did decrease the speed that we'll otherwise have by 0 0.1 meters per second. So it went there. Um, so cool, I think that was uh, everything that the problem asked for, 3.7. Great, thank you.